I'm going to go ahead and create a model of a digital to analog converter. So I create a new specification, we'll just call it DAC. Make it 8 bits, we'll call it an 8 bit digital to analog converter. Now I'm going to go ahead and start entering the pins for this DAC. Now normally, you'd be able to import the symbol or an, an empty model in order to get the pins. So you wouldn't have to type them in. But we're going to pretend we're doing a top-down design where we don't actually have anything to start with. We'll go ahead and enter the pins from scratch so that you can see the whole thing. So we're going to go ahead and we'll start with the out. out. An output pin will be an output, and we'll say it's a differential voltage output. We'll have a 8-bit input for this DAC, call it LVL. It'll be an input, and it will be a, let's say it's signed, or a two's complement number. We'll have enable input, that'll be a, be a regular digital signal. We'll go ahead and have a voltage reference. Call it VREF, be an input, and it will just be a voltage. Go ahead and we'll also have a current input. That will be a port I bias. We'll have a VDD input. That will be supply. And we'll have ground input. That will be ground. Let me go ahead and enter some comments in. So this is the output, input, this is an enable line. And let's say the input will be input voltage. And let's say it's a one volt nominal input voltage. How about we just write down that it's the reference. Reference, one volt nominal. My bias will be the input bias current. We'll say that's a 10 microamp nominal. And we'll go ahead and we'll say the VDD has got a positive uh, supply of 2.5 volts nominal and the ground. Actually, 10 microamps is a little bit high. Why don't we go with this one microamp? All right. Now let's go ahead and enter the behavior. So typically what I do is I focus on the input pins that will ultimately contribute to the output. So let's start with VREF. Let's say the output is scaled with VREF. So go ahead and just say VREF equals the volt here. Now I'll be able to reference this VREF in, on another line. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with enable. Enable. And in this case, enable is a digital signal. So it's going to go into an analog output. So I'm, I want to go ahead and smooth it. So with smooth, uh, it's also going to affect the analog section. And let's see. So now, and then I have level. So I'm going to have level, which I'm going to normalize it to be 8 bits. So it can be from 0 to 255. I'm going to go ahead and divide it by 128. So I end up creating a value that's between 0 and 2. I'm also going to smooth it. And it will also affect the analog as well. Okay. And now I'm just going to go ahead and put the output together. So it's a differential output. So I'm going to say VD equals enable. So enable is either a 1 or 0. So if it's off, it'll just be 0. If it's on, it'll be a 1 times VREF. It's nominally 1 volt, so just multiply by 1. And I'll multiply by level. Right? So something between 0 and 2 volts. I'll set the common mode to be half of VDD. VDD is 2.5 volts nominal. So common mode voltage, I'll set it to 1.25 volts. And I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and model a supply current as well. So I'll say the current is equal to enable times 10 microamps. So when the block is on, it'll consume 10 microamps. When it's off, uh, it won't consume anything. I'll go ahead and also add some assertions to this. So some input checking to make sure that the input uh, bias, especially the references, are set correctly and the supplies. The VREF is supposed to have a 1 volt nominal. So the VREF should be between, say, 0 0.9 volts to 1.1 volts. Uh, the bias current should be between, say, say 0 0.9 microamps to 1.1 microamps. Supply current, let's say it's between 2.3 uh, volts to 2.7 volts. 
and let's say ground should be between 10 millivolts to 10 millivolts. All right. Now, one thing we might want to do, we might want to make sure the assertions don't give a false positive. So when the block is off, but say the input reference is wrong, you know, we want the block not to complain. So let's set the assertion so that they'll only fire when the block is enabled. And so I'll do that for all of these, except for enable. And then we could also set a glitch time. Let's say the voltage reference gets out of range for less than a microsecond. And let's say we want to ignore that. This will ignore all failures that are one microsecond or less. So I'll put that down here. All right. And the final thing I might want to do is I might want to make sure the block gets turned off when there's an assertion failure. So I'm just going to add here, enable, I'm going to end this with not fault. Okay, fault is a built-in uh, variable that we have. So when the block doesn't have a fault, it'll be enabled. And the other way to look at it is if one of these assertion fails and fault goes high, right, this will be a zero and enable will be zero and the block will turn off. That's all we need to enter. That describes our block. To generate our model, we hit generate and view. Our model is down below and the model is 296 lines of code. Thank you for watching. Please click in the upper left for our next video. Please click in the lower left for the playlist of all of our videos in the series. Please click on the right to subscribe to our channel.